All right, well, welcome back to Exhaust Sports Auto. My name is Kevin, and we are here to check out this 2013 Porsche Panamera GTS. So who do we have to thank for this little opportunity? It is none other than European Performance in Cary, Raleigh, North Carolina. And I'm here because they specialize in Porsches. They service these vehicles, and uh, you can even get a warranty with this bad boy. So that's why I'm here to check this out, and it's only got about 43,000 miles on it. So what is it about this particular vehicle that makes this car so special basically because i've driven other panameras before but this is the gts model this is the most aggressive version of the panamera during its time and actually even still today but the reason the main reason why this is important is because this is naturally aspirated it's a 4.8 liter v8 engine basically and it's a little under fifty thousand dollars here at this dealership so it's kind of in that pragmatic obtainable price point for most normal human beings so that's why i'm here to check this out because the new gts's as great as they might be they're twin turbocharged v8 so the sound is now muffled through a turbocharger basically whereas this is not this one is supposed to sound nuts and we're about to find that out when we take this out on the road so let's first of all let's briefly let's talk about the looks of this vehicle and let's start out with the normal mode of course but um the looks of this car is controversial me personally, I've always liked the way it looked because it looks like nothing else out on the road. I mean, it just looks like this big old whale, basically. It exudes money, it exudes prestige. People just know what it is instantaneously, even people who don't know what cars are, basically. They pay attention to this car, it's special to them. And most importantly, you look like a bag of money rolling down the road. So I guess that's the most important thing with these vehicles, right? Right. Okay, so with that established, you know, you let me know in the comment section what you think about the way that this particular vehicle looks because at the end of the day, that is subjective, of course, but what is not subjective is the way that this vehicle drives. So some uh, quick specs for you here, you know, the 4.8 liter V8 engine, of course, produces 430 horsepower and about 384 pounds feet of torque. That is up 30 horsepower and about 15 pounds feet of torque from the Panamera 4S. Excellent thrust, of course, and that is all in the normal mode. I'm about to put it in the Sport Plus mode and all that stuff here in a bit, and I'll even put it in the uh, active exhaust mode. I think all that stuff comes on automatically, but another big change, okay? This is the most aggressive Panamera out there, okay? This thing's got air suspension, I believe it's a $1,900 option. That makes this vehicle sit about 10 millimeters lower than the other Panameras, and it's also got the stiffest suspension setup out of all the, uh, the Panameras, basically. So this is the driver's Panamera. Weighs about 4,200 pounds, a little over that actually. It's got an amazing seven speed dual clutch transmission, of course. Well, auto upshift, I think you have to move the little gear lever thing over. But um, aside from that though, this transmission, I've always said this is absolutely perfection man it just it reacts it's one of the best reacting transmissions out there it's not just some hype or anything like that it really is legit it's one of the greatest transmissions aside from like supercars or something like that so that's incredible that you also get that here so that's fantastic and coupled with this engine of course it's got such a great melody to it because it is a naturally aspirated v8 this particular car is riding on 20 inch wheels okay it's got like 255 wide tires in the front and 295s in the rear Get this thing up to a little bit more speed here. This car is super refined, even at higher speeds. Hardly any wind noise, hardly any tire noise even, even with these really wide tires. Honestly, <laughs> tires as wide is totally unnecessary for a vehicle like this because it's got so much grip because of the amazing suspension setup on this thing. Uh, Porsches always have amazing mechanical grip and it's all wheel drive on top of that. Honestly, they could have went with a smaller tire size and reduced the uh, road noise even further, but even with the setup, it's so freaking quiet. This is not like the 911 Carrera 4S I just drove. That thing was so freaking loud and unrefined, had so much tire noise. No idea what's up with that, but this so much more isolated. It's got double pane glass as well, which the 911s do not have at least the Carrera 4 that I drove, which was a 2014 model year. So if you want refinement and you're kind of confused between all these Porsche products and you still want something kind of sort of sporty, Panamera is a good option to go with. 
because it also blends in that refinement as well. Now here's another thing. This is a very expensive car when brand new. This is like $120,000. Even the regular, like just base model V6 Panamera's are extremely expensive. Now why is that? They put a lot of research and development money into just making this the ultimate car even in the base form basically. It's not just like the BMWs where you get kind of a neutered car as a base model and you have to step up to the M cars. This has probably more capabilities than an M car. It's like up there with an M car basically, but it sacrifices none of the refinement characteristics. That's what makes Porsche so great basically. It's like one of the most perfect daily drivers and most importantly, these things financially make a whole lot of sense because they don't lose a whole lot of value. And this is one of the few like kind of last naturally aspirated Panameras that you can get. And it is ballistically quick. And this is why I don't care about the turbo models because this thing is so freaking fast. It just jumps out, you know what I'm saying? It's just fantastic. It's got grip for days. This is the Panamera that I personally would like to own, honestly. Now let's put everything in the Sport Plus, open up the exhaust, and it becomes immediately much louder. Great sound from this engine. Absolutely love it, man. And I'm about to test out this handling here in a little bit because that's also very important. This thing does weigh about 4,200 pounds, of course. A little bit of roll, of course, that's to be expected, but it is very composed. Very impressed with this thing, for sure. Thrust is incredible. This is the stability is great. Everything reacts so perfectly to my inputs, and the exhaust is just absolutely sensational as well. It will hold on to the gears here a little bit when you put in the Sport Plus, so you will be wasting some more fuel, of course. So that is kind of unfortunate, but my goodness, man, this is just such a great driving experience. It just hits, it just hits everything, man. Me personally, I don't know, dude. As a daily driver, I find this Panamera to be superior to the 911 because the capabilities of the 911 are extraterrestrial but because of that you'll never really be able to properly utilize any of that capability out on the road the slight softness in this chassis compared to like a 911 gives it this better feel out on the road it's more comfortable but yet it's still got enough capabilities to make this more than enough fun basically it's just got it's got everything you need to enjoy out on the road and cars like that are typically superior in general just for street driving basically it never gets old it's just a very satisfactory experience even after like a couple of years of ownership you don't get tired of it basically because you don't feel like your money's being wasted like you can't really utilize what you just purchased so that's a great thing it's got a nice little pop in the exhaust basically it's not like super loud or obnoxious it's just nice natural and sounds really great man i love it and another thing, this car, you don't have to be doing 300 miles an hour in it to make it feel special. You can literally just be doing like regular speeds in this vehicle, like the speed limit, and it still feels special and satisfactory out of these roads. Cars that feel special, even without doing 700 miles an hour, are one of the best cars. Those are the cars that never get old, basically. But, you know, let's uh, put it back in the Sport and let's, uh, immediately the car gets louder. So freaking meaty. you feel like you're piloting a six-figure object around. So again, those are all great qualities again. And uh, when, even when you put the dampers in the Sport Plus mode, basically, it's still not ridiculous. It doesn't beat you up or anything like that. Really, I don't really know there's a huge difference between these modes, but you know, again, at least you have these options here. The best part about it is definitely the active exhaust, and that's the main reason why you would choose this over like a 4S, because it's much louder than a 4S, apparently. But both vehicles utilize a V8, so that's good. But another main thing, you know, I kind of touched on this before, this vehicle, because it's a GTS, it's gonna hold its value a little bit better. So you're not gonna lose much in terms of depreciation when you buy it at these types of prices, you know, around like $50,000. It's a good, smart buy, especially with the warranty. You can enjoy this car. It just makes a lot of sense, man. PDK is one of the best in the world. Shifts so accurately and just 
downshifts perfectly, upshifts perfectly. It's just a great match for this incredible motor as well. It's just so free revving. It revs like about 7,000 RPM. Sounds glorious all the way through. Really loving the speed of this thing. This is just more than enough speed, man. I mean, 430 horsepower. It's even up 30 horsepower from the Carrera 4S. So that's another great thing about these vehicles. And no, you don't need the tightest freaking chassis and the least amount of body roll or anything like that. That's totally not uh, necessary. In fact, you can't even use that. I would rather the car have a little bit of softness built into it to help it aid in the ride quality and all those uh, pragmatic things that you actually need out on the road. So I'm glad to see that here. The steering is absolutely perfect. You don't need 12 arms to move this thing like some of the BMW M cars. All right, so now that we are stopped here, actually, um, I'm not actually gonna spend too much time on this interior because I've already covered the Panamera twice. So it's the same uh, generation and the same interior, basically. And I've also covered multiple Cayennes as well that utilize the same interior. But the most important thing is this is not a super high mileage vehicle. It's only got 43,000 miles on it. But one of the key things I really like about Porsche is it's the second closest to Lexus basically in terms of the way that the interiors hold up. So this interior space is so freaking solid in here. There's a few kind of chintzy bits here like the window switches basically. It's kind of the, that plastic bit is kind of a little bit loose here. So that's really the only drawback I really found with this interior space, but everything else just has a nice rock solid feel to it. Nothing is creaking or rattling with this with this particular vehicle. And usually these Porsche products don't as long as you keep up with it. This is the kind of ivory cream type of interior and whoever had this vehicle before took pretty nice care of this vehicle because it's not super torn up or completely stained or anything like that. It's actually in very good condition. It's a very nice little spec going on here. It's kind of brownish metallic paint along with this interior really fantastic this nice old wood trim makes everything about it solid and you got plenty of features in this vehicle like heated and cooled seats you got the air suspension of course like i mentioned you got the active exhaust of course climate control totally separated it's a big kind of brick of buttons right here but as long as you get used to it it's really easy actually it's just the infotainment i'm not a huge fan of kind of uh, cumbersome to get used to but it's there it works semi good, but you know, at least it's got Bluetooth. That's really the only thing that matters to me. It's got the Bose audio system, which does sound good. I do like it. This is like an eight year old car now at this point. Now the only baffling bit for me about this particular car is there's no buttons on the steering wheel here. So I'm not really sure if something changed with this car. It's kind of confusing to me. I see some letters like sport plus and all that stuff layered in here it's very strange i don't know what's going on here but there's supposed to be some buttons i believe so accessing the gauge cluster is kind of an enigma to me in this particular car but whatever the gauge cluster is great it's got a nice big tachometer in the middle there it shows you what gear you're in and like i mentioned 200 miles an hour on the dash so you got that as well comfortable seats and these seats go down a lot basically so this car it's like the Porsche CEO is like a really big dude, like over six feet tall. So he needs to be able to drive all these cars apparently. So it's made for bigger people actually. It doesn't seem like it on the outside, but it really is. Like on the inside, the seat goes so far down and you can really bring the seat back a lot. So really tall individuals, well over six feet tall can definitely fit in here. I'm only five foot 11. I have no troubles fitting in really any car because I'm under six feet tall. You don't have a panoramic sunroof in here, just a regular sunroof and it gets the job done of course. Rear seat space. So the rear seats are accommodating. Okay, again, I'm five foot 11. I sit closer to the wheel than most people my size, but I still got plenty of space in the back. And I think even if you had the seat back further, I mean, I think six foot tall people can still sit back there. I mean, again, this was made for the Porsche CEO to sit in the rear. And headroom is not an issue even in the back as well. So that's great. And you might be surprised because the rear kind of rakes back a little bit. But before we talk about that, you got HVAC in the bag, got a few little storage cubbies back there as well. But most importantly, let's talk about the, uh, the trunk space now because the trunk space, it's a hatchback. And also you can fold down the rear seats in this thing. So even though it's a rear wheel drive platform, you still fold down seats. You got plenty of space. You can put everything back there. You got the like the Bose subwoofer thing in the in the back though. So there is no storage space underneath and there is no spare tire. It's kind of got like this fix a flat thing going on. So wrapping everything up, really love driving this car driving this thing is the highlight it's got all the dynamics going on for it i think this is a superior daily driver to a 911 and most people are like oh of course it is because the 911 is a sports car but you know they tried to up the 
refinement in the 911. Really, the only thing bringing the 911 down is like the sheer amount of road noise with that thing. This thing's also got fat tires on it, but it's not producing that much amount of road noise. I think the 992 should be a lot better in that regards, but obviously that's like a freaking six-figure car still because it's brand new. So if you're looking at the 991 generation and this, this is going to be like, man, this is like $25,000 cheaper than that 911 I drove. And um, it's got a lot of fun still. It's got an amazing naturally aspirated V8. And I also forgot to mention the paddles in this thing are amazing because it's got the regular paddles, not that stupid button thing that you push in and out. So that's fantastic. And they feel great, meaty, and nice metallic feel to it. Absolutely love that. Brakes are a little bit soft. Forgot to mention that. That's the only thing, but uh, they do work, but they do feel a little bit soft. That's the only uh, thing I noticed. And uh, even the turning radius is pretty good in this thing. I, you know, steering wheel is nice. So all that stuff is great. This is the Panamera that I personally would choose for myself. I wouldn't really be too crazy about the turbo because it's just so much more money. And, uh, you know, it's just not really needed out on the road. I'm sure it's nuts, but this is like the perfect amount of performance and everything that you need. So owners please please do leave your thoughts down in the comment section below i'm going to leave all of european performances information down in the description box and you can check them out if you want to purchase this particular vehicle you can get a small discount if you mention my name no i don't get anything out of it of course because these reviews have to be objective and um, objectively really enjoyed this car this would be on my personal short list even so the fact that these vehicles age extremely well is a great thing some people don't like the looks, I personally do. So with that, thank you again for watching. I'll leave the next video on the end screen here and I'll see you there. Take care and goodbye.